Hey, what's going on, everybody? And happy Falcon and Winter Soldier Friday. Elliot back again with my weekly recap, breakdown, and review of the latest episode of Disney Plus Falcon and Winter Soldier. We're talking episode six, which was titled One World, One People, which is the season potentially series finale of this show. And listen, I got some things to say about this finale, some things I loved. Some things I didn't enjoy, some reveals I still have questions about, and we're going to break it all down here in this spoiler discussion. But before we dive into the discussion, make sure you all are following me on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the community. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That way you can get the alert for when I drop new reviews. It would mean the world to me if you all can like and share this review. It helps out the channel a lot, but I also appreciate all the support. And listen, go ahead and light those comments up. There's a couple questions I want to know from you all, some answers I want to get in regards to your overall thoughts. So number one, one, let's talk about this finale. What were your pros, your cons, your thoughts on Sam's journey? You know, the redemption that Bucky has, Carly's demise, Sharon Carter's reveal, John Walker's reveal, and let's discuss it all about this finale, but also... Let's dive into the discussion about your overall thoughts of this entire series, your pros, your cons, your favorite episodes, your least favorite episodes, your favorite arc, maybe your least favorite arc, but also more importantly, let's discuss how would you like to see the continuation of Sam and Bucky? Would you like to see a Captain America 4 or would you like to see a season 2? Let's discuss it all in the comments below. So before we dive into the discussion, look... I got to thank you all. The continued support every single week on this channel overall, but in on these reviews every single week, the likes, the shares, the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting these videos. The There's so many great content creators that cover this show, and hell, I've had those content creators on this very channel, so I appreciate you guys showing this channel some love and showing these videos some love, and you know we like to continue the conversation, so even after this review and this breakdown, we will be back every single Saturday. You may or may not know, but we go live three p.m. Central Time, really dive into the episode. Myself and my amazing co-hosts, Amanda and Chris, we break it all down for sometimes two hours, sometimes three hours. You never know because we have such a great time discussing the show, and we always like to bring in some guests, and those guests that will be joining us tomorrow are Christine, we have Kobe Mack, and we also have making his return, Michael from Black Gay Comic Geek. We're going to be breaking it down, ladies and gentlemen, talking about this episode, the pros, the cons, the reveals, all that fun stuff, and we also have some MCU news to talk about. we got a Shane she trailer we got some cassie news so we're gonna break it all down tomorrow here on this very channel 3 p.m central time see you all there so let's get into this discussion here starting off with just my initial reaction after watching the episode <sighs> listen there's some things i loved about this episode i i think the the strong points of this show sam's journey his his kind of coming from falcon going into the 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 mantra of captain america his interactions with Isaiah Bradley, which we'll talk about. I love that stuff. The Bucky Redemption stuff worked for me. The stuff that didn't work for me, the John Walker, the way that they kind of handle that transition from Captain America to U.S. agent, a little clunky, and we'll talk about that. Sharon Carter as the power broker. Come on, we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more in depth. And then again, the Flag Smashers, we'll get into them. So overall, like I said, there's things I loved about the episode. There's things I didn't enjoy. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I'm kind of right in the middle. But again, let me know your thoughts in this episode. So with that, let's get into this recap and break it all down. Starting off with the episode, opening up with last week's events. We see at this point that the GRC has been compromised by the Flag Smashers. They have taken over this patch act discussion. We see Sam and Bucky coming up with the plan, which is actually a great call back to episode two. Because if you all remember, Sam did not want to give Bucky the plans when he was on his first mission. But now they have come closer. They're the best of friends in this episode, but in comes Sharon Carter, making her way into the episode, a very cool homage, I guess you could say, to one of my favorite uh, MCU films, which is The Winter Soldier, she does the whole Black Widow face reveal, you know, Mission Impossible, it's not the person you thought it was moment, which I thought was going to allude to maybe something else later in the episode, of maybe a scroll, or someone else being the power broker, but we'll talk about that a little bit later, but in comes a really cool moment for Sam Wilson as he comes into the building, throws the shield, hits one of the Flag Smashers, and he's donning his Captain America comic book accurate suit. And listen, regardless of how you feel about this episode, positively or negatively, 
I think that suit is fire. I think that the wings, the Wakandan wings are on point. The look is on point. The goggles, red wings back. He's rocking the shield. I thought that suit was absolutely fire, and I can't wait to see it on a big screen when he ultimately becomes Captain America in the Avengers film or potentially in his own solo outing or a season two. But before we get into more of the details of him fighting Backtrack, there is a nice little, I guess, I don't want to say Easter egg, but listen, Marvel is very intentional. This is the third time that has been referred to that Captain America is on the moon, Steve Rogers. Listen, I said it when they mentioned it uh, in episode one. I think the next time we're going to see Steve Rogers, if he does, you know, it's Chris Evans, who said he's never coming back, you know, you know, money talks. If we see him again, maybe not in the movie, but I can see him sitting next to Nick Fury in a sword uh, facility on the moon and maybe secret invasion. So you heard it here first, Steve Rogers making a return, secret invasion. He's going to be the big cameo that we all speculate about with WandaVision, with this show. We're going to probably speculate as King the Conqueror going to be in low key, so on and so forth. We're going to get Steve Rogers. He's going to be on a sword facility on the moon with Nick Fury in Secret Evasions. You heard it here first. But nonetheless, we'll see where that goes. We see Sam fighting Backtrack, who wants his revenge on taking out Sam. Cutting to Carly getting a call into Bucky as we see Bucky trying to talk her off the ledge. But listen, she's already too far gone. She's killed people in this season. She even goes as far as saying she's willing to die in this episode, which we know she does, which we'll talk about that, obviously. But she is willing to do whatever it takes to get her message out there cutting to the grc members getting fled into a trap set up by the flag smashers in comes sharon carter who just makes her way into this episode and kind of just made her way into this season and i'll talk about her a little bit later but i will say her kind of infiltrating the situation is very accurate to her being Agent 13 in the comics. She is a spy. She's one of the best spies in the MCU. So her making her way into this situation, taking out the Flag Smasher, who's a super soldier pretty easily with the bomb that she placed on him, again, shows you her abilities. The execution of the character we'll talk a little bit about later, but we see Sam dealing with Backtrack as he eventually kind of, you know, says, okay, I'm done with this fight. I need to go do what I need to be, which is Captain America. He bursts burst through the window with the shield, which I love that he catches the shield. I love that this show is bringing back all the stuff that makes Sam a great superhero in regards to he doesn't have super serum, but he has great words to, to, to motivate people, to speak to people, to talk people off the ledge, to really kind of embrace themselves. And he also is a great flight uh, user when it comes to his wings. So seeing Falcon, or I should say Captain America, using his wings, seeing him in action was just like really cool action to be some really top action in my personal opinion. Cut back to Bucky. He's now on the streets. He's fighting the Flag Smashers hand to hand. He has a moment where he's fighting this flag smasher carly sees that he has the upper hand she distracts him by lighting up one of the buses or one of the trucks again carly she was out for blood she did not care who was gonna die she just wanted her mission to get out there and we'll talk about again the execution of the flag smashers and particularly carly morgenthal which brings us into my boy john walker making his way into the episode which is about 15, 20 minutes. I'm thinking, I'm looking at the watch like, okay, when is John Walker going to make his way into the episode? Here he is. He's on the streets calling out Carly Morgenthal, as Carly said, you know, and again, the execution of Carly, good guy, bad guy, kind of in the middle. It's kind of a, a blurred character, a, a, a great character per se. She tells John, hey, I didn't mean to kill your friend. I don't want to hurt people that don't matter, which obviously triggers John. Like, you're telling me my best friend's life didn't matter as he kind of rages out and they have their kind of hand-to-hand combat fight, which we see and we'll talk about that and break it down. But going back to, again, the positive stuff of the action, I thought that some of the action was a little clunky, but all the stuff involving Sam as Captain America was pretty fire to me. Again, seeing him with the shield, seeing him using Red Wing, communicating with one of the members of the GRC who can control the helicopter, all that stuff, him taking out the guy in the helicopter, that stuff was like really top-notch action. Everything in this episode involving Sam and Bucky to me was like the strongest points of this episode. But nonetheless, going back to the street level, we see John fighting Carly. They have a little back and forth. His shield that he made it in his garage has no bearings in this fight at all. They just kind of throw it off to the side. But nonetheless, we see um, them having their back and forth. At one point, John sees that the bus or the truck is on fire and he neglects to help those people because he's out for blood he's out for vengeance but he has a redemption story of a sorts in this episode but we see them having their back and forth ultimately carly uh, knocks him out ultimately john wakes up he decides to help to save the people he he ultimately doesn't because the flag smashers kind of tackle him and 
We'll get back to John a little bit in regards to his arc and how I thought that was a little bit mishandled. But we see, again, Sam being the hero, being the focus on this episode. He comes in and saves the day. He saves the, the truck of people with his, uh, he, he's not super strong, but he uses his Wakandan wings. He uses his thrusters. He uses the red wing to lift up the truck and to save the people. Again, this episode focused on Sam Wilson going from the Falcon, Black Falcon, to Captain America. So I really enjoyed all that stuff there. We actually see one of the people in the crowd out two black people, one of the black guys say, hey, it's Black Falcon, and another uh, black guy corrects him and says, no, it's the new Captain America. That was a little bit too on the nose, but it's a very, it's an homage to comics. That's something that you can see. I can imagine reading that in a, in a 1940 Captain American comic book, or Sam of that matter, when he does become Captain America, I can see that being a very comic book type of line. Again, it's a little bit too on the nose, but it's something that, I, it's a comic book reference to say the least. Now we see Sam, Bucky, and John Walker taking on Carly and the Flag Smashers. We see Carly at this point, they're now split up. Carly makes her way down to this kind of basement area. Backtrack's down there. Sam, Bucky, you know, John's down there. They can't find her. We see Carly hear someone whistle. And that person whistling is Sharon Carter. And ladies and gentlemen, we've been speculating about it since the, what, second episode when the Power Broker was brought up. It is no other than Sharon Carter is revealed to be at least a version of the power broker. There may be someone else out there. It might just take on the mantra of like the power broker is just like a representing a certain movement versus like an actual one person. But they do refer to her as the power broker, which to me, logically speaking, just really doesn't add up in my head in regards to Zemo saying that he knew the power broker and, and I don't think he ever met the power broker in person, but he referred to the power broker as a he. So that's a little bit questionable. Again, he can just be assuming that someone with this much power has to be a male, which, you know, that might be the case. But then also, like, why was Sharon taking out the men in the third episode? Why does she, I guess, not stop Sam and Bucky from killing her Dr. Nigel, who was responsible for making the new serum? It's just very weird how they handled that reveal. Again, there may be more to the power broker. It might just literally be a title that someone else can just kind of pass along as more of a movement, very similar to the Flag Smashers versus it being like an individual person. But again, that, that reveal to me was just like... Agatha all along, which that revealed to me, even though we all knew that that was Agatha Harkness, or at least I did from like the conception and hearing that this character was going to be a part of WandaVision, but it was the execution that still worked for me, even though we knew that that was, she was going to be the villain and she was the, it was Agatha all along, but the Sharon Carter revealed to me kind of fell completely flat. But nonetheless, in the scene, and we'll talk about it more in tomorrow's live stream about Sharon Carter and the Power Broker reveal, but I wasn't a fan of it, to say the least. We see at this point, Backtrack, we have this Mexican standoff. We see Backtrack has a gun pointed at Sharon, uh, and we see at this point, Carly has a gun pointed at Sharon, and then Sharon, she shoots Backtrack, and then in return, we see Carly shoots her, so they're all wounded at this point in the episode, and it's just like, okay, well, let's let's cut on to the, to the fun stuff. We see... A very interesting scene. We see Bucky and John. Ultimately, they capture the remaining Flag Smashers by using the app. And there's a little uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, quote that John says to them. And then we see him and Bucky, like, not embrace each other, but they, like, you know, we see John, like, say, hey, man, it's good job. We work together. I'm just thinking to myself, wasn't it just last week that you guys were fighting? Well, I don't want to say fighting to the death, but, I mean, John wanted to kill them in, in his rage in last week's episode of them trying to take back the shield. But it was just, I don't know. I'll get more to John and how they handled that that character to me. But cutting back to Sam, who's not fighting Carly at this point. He doesn't want to kill her. Ultimately, we see Sharon shoots her, and she dies. And, eh. Again, I think my thing with Carly Morgenthau, I, I love that actress. I'm really enjoying where her career is headed, and I'm, I'm excited to see where she where she pops up in Disney next. We see her in Solo. We see her in this show. I think the actress was was fine. It's the execution of that character, man. I, I, again, I said it many and many times. I know what the character represents. It's the, the people that don't have a voice has been forgotten about. I get all the metaphors and the symbolizing of the character. 
I just didn't care. When we see Morgan die at that moment, I'm just like, yeah, Carly Morgenthau, I'm sorry. When she dies in that moment, it's like, yeah, you know, it kind of happens. You know, it kind of was expected. And I didn't have any emotional connection to that character in that moment. I didn't feel for her. It was more so when Sam talked about her that I felt a little bit for her. But in that moment, I was just like, you know, it kind of it kind of came to that moment. But the moment that did work for that character is what the character represented as Sam is describing that she's not a terrorist. She was just a misguided teenager. And this is a moment here we see the reporter saying, oh, are you the new Captain America? This, that, and the other. But then we have a really interesting moment. I think a really powerful moment. It's, it is on the nose. It's very political. Obviously, some people are not going to like what Sam Wilson as the new Captain America said. But we have this political debate. In the middle of all this action, I think this was the strongest point in the episode, as well as the next point with Isaiah that we'll talk about here. But Sam's talking to the GRC and a senator in regards to the complication of the disposition of the people that are powerless. And I kind of really enjoyed the sentiment of what Sam was saying and what he represented and reminding the senator that he's a black man that carries his shield and carries that burden of, you know, uh, all the history that comes with black people in the culture and just people in minority in America and the struggle and understanding the struggle as we see John and we see Bucky watching him have this conversation. But more importantly, we see the world is watching Sam as Captain America, as we see Isaiah Bradley watching this, as well as his grandson, Eli, and everyone across the world. I would imagine that Steve Rogers probably saw that. That would have been like a that would have been a good moment to kind of maybe pan out and maybe seeing Steve or maybe, I don't know, alluding to him watching. You don't have to have Chris Evans maybe in the shot, but just alluding that he saw that moment of, of Sam embracing uh, him as Captain America. But again, Sam acknowledges that there's people out there that probably hate him right now, that probably uh, hate what he has become and not wanting him to be a black Captain America. And I have the quote here of what he said. And Sam says, every time I pick this thing up, I know that there are millions out there that's going to hate it for me. Even now, now, here, I hear it, the stares, the judgment, and there's nothing I can do to change their minds, yet I'm still here. No super serum, no blonde hair, no blue eyes. The only power I have is to believe we can do better. That is a, a really powerful speech by Captain America. That, to me, is Sam becoming Captain America. Again, the actions there, the stuff that we got throughout the season, but that, to me, is when we see the full transformation of Sam Wilson from the Falcon to the new Captain America. So I thought that was a really powerful moment. Let me know your thoughts on Sam's speech there. Cut back to Sharon. She's wounded. We see Bucky helping her out. We also see that the uh, the Flag Smashers, there's one Flag Smasher that was loose or whatever, and we see, you know, the new Cap getting orders to, you know, help him out. We see him do so, but we also see John Walker just kind of fade away in the background. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Didn't the senators say if we see you interfere with any of these affairs, you're going to have, you're going to be arrested on site, but they just let him kind of go, you know, free of charge. But, you know, we'll, we'll get back to John in a little bit. But cut to the remaining Flag Smashers being escorted to uh, be taken away to the raft. Uh, and we see that the, the raft ends up blowing up. Uh, and one of the guys says, one world, one people, and ends up blowing up. We pan out. And it's at first, I'm like, who's this random white guy in this car? But then it made sense because the very next next scene we cut to Zemo who's in his jail cell he's smiling because he just heard the news that the remaining flag smashers have been killed so of course that guy that was in the car was his butler again it didn't click with me at first I'm like who is this random white dude but it was the butler that we met uh, a couple episodes when Zemo returned to the show cut back to John Walker and his wife in Val they're in a court area court I don't know why, why they're in that area I don't know why he couldn't just go to like another secret facility nonetheless regardless of the location we see Val having her funny jokes with the wife or whatever what's taking John so long he ultimately comes out he's donning a new suit of his own all black he is now embracing the mantra as Val tells him things are going to get weird now the world's not going to need Captain America it's going to need a U.S. agent and again the, the the execution was a little bit clunky because they kind of threw in some jokes and it kind of stripped away the vengeance and the hatred and the villainous nature that I was kind of thinking that he was going to go down that path and, and there's still that opportunity for the U.S. agent to become a, a villain in the MCU, but kind of the joking nature of John, you know, celebrating with his wife, like, I'm back, I'm back, uh, see you later, Val, and don't call me that, like, it kind of was undercut by that moment, and again, the execution of that character, again, 
This might be a hot take. I was for Captain America, John Walker as Captain America in regards to not what he represented and him ultimately killing that Flag Smasher and all that stuff, but just understanding a little bit of where his perspective was, how the government used him, how the government disowned him, discharged him, all that stuff, and having this kind of path of kind of creating what he finds to be justice. I found that to be a very interesting, compelling story. I found that character to be very fleshed out, really well developed. It reminded me so much of like, okay, what would happen if you gave, you know, the Punisher the shield? What kind of justice would he have, right? So that's why I kind of like what we got with John Walker and then just ultimately the way that they... Again, he jumps into the mix. He has a joke with Bucky. He's the new U.S. agent. Just the execution kind of felt a little misguided for my personal taste. Cutting back to Bucky visiting his friend. This was a great moment for the character because he now has his moment. He had the conversation with Sam. He's no longer doing it for him, but he's doing it for the people that he's hurt in the past as a Winter Soldier. As he tells him that he was responsible for the death and the murder of his son. We also see him give the gift to that terrible therapist. Uh, giving her the book. Letting her know that he's no longer the Winter Soldier. He's broken free of his guilt and his kind of tr tr trauma that he's embraced as a Winter Soldier. Cut back to probably one of the most satisfying moments in the entire season. We go to Sam visiting Isaiah, who we learn about the GRC is reconsidering the Patch Act, which I'm pretty sure they're going to go ahead and not go along with that. We see Isaiah is impressed. You know, Sam tells him that it's not going to be, a, or I should say Isaiah tells Sam, it's not going to be an easy fight, but it's something that Sam's going to fight for. And I love that conversation that they have and Sam saying that we built this country, which was a great moment, and he's willing to die. And, and you know, he's willing to potentially you know, have his life on the line uh, and die to protect this country was a really powerful moment for that character. And we see this really fantastic moment as Sam has a gift for Isaiah. He brings his son Eli with him, his grandson. They go to the museum and there it is. They have a whole thing set up, uh, paying uh, honor and paying respects and acknowledging Isaiah Bradley as Captain America as Isaiah hugs Sam and, and embraces him and, and shares a tear. That was a very powerful earned moment i can't wait to see more from isaiah because you know it's coming you don't just get carl lumley who just absolutely slayed this role you don't just give us eli bradley and not refer to him as the patriot in a potential young avengers show or movie we're going to get more of him and i can't wait to see more of him. i thought that moment was fantastic as we wrap up we cut to the celebration of sam back home with his family with his friends, and now his best friend, Bucky, as Bucky now has a family. He's happy. He's smiling. He's playing with Sam's nephews. They embrace each other. They have a moment. We cut to the title saying, Captain America in the Winter Soldier. End of the episode, but there's a stinger. There's a post credit scene. Cut to Sharon Carter getting pardoned as they acknowledge, the center acknowledged how important the Carters were to the government. As we know, Peggy Carter was one of the founders of S.H.I.E.L.D., so they are very important to the government. They acknowledge that. They pardon her. They even give her back her old position as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, probably transitions to S.W.O.R.D., but nonetheless, we see her walk on the courtroom. She makes a call to someone, which goes back to my theory about the power broker isn't necessarily have to be one individual it can just be a title that she might have been talking to another version of a power broker somewhere else in the mcu you know throw your theories in the comments now was she talking to Val? was she talking to general ross was she talking to another villain that might be revealed was she talking to norman osborne i mean there's so many different you know characters you know kingpin you you name it put it in the comments who you think she was on the line with as she says that she now you know, she has her old job back, so she has a lot of toys and a lot of resources at her very fingertips. So no longer will she be diving to the super soldier serum, but now she's going to have weapons and powers of, uh, you know, undisclosed, you know, weapons and people that are in secret facilities Thunderbolts, you know, uh, villains, Dark Avengers at her disposal. So I don't know. I think that's a great way to set up uh, another show, uh, which is going to deal with, uh, you know, power or should say suits maybe being out there. Tony Stark suits in particular. That is a great way to set up her being a maybe a main villain in Armored Wars, which will be obviously the Rhodey story and him stopping those weapons of mass destruction, getting out to the public. But also, I think that's a great segue into the Iron Heart show. So I think that. 
that's what they're doing with Sharon Carter. Again, we'll talk about more of her tomorrow. We'll talk about more of John tomorrow, and ultimately, we'll just break it all down more in depth in tomorrow's stream. But like I said, there were some things I loved about this episode. I thought everything they did with Sam and Bucky was fantastic. I thought the Isaiah Bradley stuff was was phenomenal. The celebration at the end was really great. But there's things that are still just not sitting well with me. The Sharon Carter as the power broker. The John Walker, ultimately, the handling of him becoming the U.S. agent. The Flag Smashers were easily the weakest element of this entire show. So some pros, some cons. But I want to know your thoughts on this episode, on this show. General take. I'll dive more into it tomorrow. But overall, I really did enjoy this show. I enjoyed what they had to do or what they did with Sam's character, what they did with Bucky, just fleshing those characters out more, learning who they are more, dealing with their trauma, dealing with their disbelief in themselves, as well as, you know, Baron Zemo being in the mix, uh, John Carter being the most fascinating character to me, and I'm excited to see what they do with the character moving forward, and there's just a lot to be said in a positive light. Now, that doesn't mean that the show was perfect, it had its hiccups, it had its moments that were questionable, it had some, you know, some pacing issues at times, some questionable character moments, some misguided storylines, some things that were taken out of the show that we've heard about now that I think would have played out a little bit differently regarding the Flag Smashers, but overall, I know enjoyed this journey and I enjoy talking about it with you all every single week. Again, this conversation will continue tomorrow 3 p.m. Central Time live. We will be discussing it, diving deep into it. So I want to see you all there in the chat and let's join the conversation. Have a fun time. So I'll see you all there tomorrow. Again, I can't thank you enough for the support on these videos. I will continue to review TV shows as you all know. We still got Invincible. I will be talking about the Netflix Shadow and Bone later today. And then also uh, we have a new show on HBO which is mayor of east town so there's still a lot of tv coverage on this show as well as we we talk about movies every single week i have my spoiler free review of mortal Kombat. so check out all that content come back tomorrow to join the conversation about this very episode and of course make sure to like the video share the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hope you all enjoy this review hope you're staying safe and we'll see you on the next video